o'clock, 22 degrees, call it 23 actually, 22.7. You know, Barbara and I went again today, which is really, really cool. Weatherman said 15 degrees didn't stand a chance, really, but we know that, don't we? Thursday, July 29th, absolute pleasure to have everybody along on Facebook. Now, if you're going to be watching a little later on over there on YouTube, uh, yeah, you know what to do, right? You do! Yes, sub, thumb, bell. Bingo. Uh, thumb, like us, bell, notifications when we have important people coming out of Vancouver Island. Today is Ryan Laird. Believe me, you guys love Ryan. You really, really do. And you're going to love this. So let's kick it off. Let's do this first. Galaxy. Galaxy. That's right, you're right here at Galaxy 107 FM and I'm absolutely elated today going over to Vancouver Island. Got a couple of friends over there, I wonder if he knows Chris Andreas, I'm going to ask him anyway. And, uh, well, let's kick it off. Here he is, live at Galaxy with Gamble, on love. So that gives us a couple of minutes to get to know each other. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, actually, do you know Chris Andreas? He uh, lives on Vancouver Island as well. You know, I don't think we've met. I was um, I was living in Nashville until uh, about two and a half, three years ago, and that's when I moved out to Vancouver Island here. So I don't know everybody out here yet. Okay, well, uh, I tell you what, I'd love to be able to introduce you, to be very, very honest. Um, yeah. That man is very, very talented across the board he really is and uh, wow. a good friend of galaxies as well now i got to welcome you to the galaxy family <laughs> now that you're doing an interview with us um i don't know whether you know but it's really not that easy to be able to actually get an interview here at galaxy or for us to be able to play your music there's a number of criteria i mean poor barbara she gets mm -hmm. about 30 bands a day getting in touch with wow. her um she's got to work that out with production and everything because we only have a certain amount of time through the week to be able to do these absolutely then it's got to go past a uh, oh by the way i'm technology i'm watching you watching me watching you kind of thing um <laughs> oh yeah oh, oh, gosh yeah. there it is i know uh, a few other canadians i've seen on your uh because i checked out your show there uh, like i'm friends with the road hammers and uh uh, I didn't come uh, back, so. McCoy and all those guys that are good friends. I, I, I don't know how many Canadians you guys have, have uh, become friends with over the years. We, those we, guys are... we almost know everybody in Canada. Okay, well, almost. we probably have a lot of mutual friends. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Clayton Bellamy, he's coming back very, very shortly, actually, out of the Ray Hammers. Clayton's a good friend of mine. Yeah, <laughs> I love Clayton. <laughs> I, I want my damn pants off him. You remember when he did the song Mud with the striped pants? The... Yeah. Yeah, he said he would promise to send them to me about four years ago now, and I'm still waiting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll have, to, we'll have to give him a hard time about that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I says to him, if you don't send them to me, when we do a gig, I'm going to put the uh, baby teething gel on your microphone so that it stuffs up your lips yeah, when you say yeah, it. Yeah, so that's your... Yeah. Well, I got, I got a... Do you know George Canyon? He's a Canadian country artist? Yep. Yeah, George, George Frank, I, I was on tour with him years ago, and, and him and his crew pranked me. They put hot sauce, I was opening up the show, and they put hot sauce on my microphone. <laughs> Let's go to the desk, my friend. <laughs> That's right, you're right here at Galaxy, 107 FM, 19 after 11 o'clock, 24 degrees, it's unseasonably hot, i got to be honest with you, this does not feel like winter, I like that, I really, I can't stand the cold anyway, I really can't, so uh, this is perfect for me, just a little bit apprehensive of what summer's going to be like, if uh, 
well over in Vancouver, for instance, well over in British Columbia anyway, one part this year, 50 degrees in some places, crazy. We don't want that here, but looking forward to summer, I've got to be honest. Now today I'm very, very elated, because coming off Vancouver Island right now is the man himself, Ryan Laird. Uh, Ryan, welcome to Galaxy. I hope I've got the last name correct. You do, you do, you said it right. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. It's nice to meet you guys. I'm, I'm really glad to do this today. Yeah, yeah well, uh, to be honest with you, uh, we were supposed to do this a number of, well, about a week or so, two weeks ago, something like that. Uh, power outage, we couldn't do anything about that, unfortunately. So uh, it is nice to be able to finally complete this deal because, believe me, I've become a very big fan very, very quickly of your music. Well, thank you for taking the time. No, I uh, obviously you couldn't avoid a power outage. I'm glad. I'm glad we got power today. Yeah, me too. Actually, it doesn't happen often, but well, you know, sometimes you're just subject to that sort of stuff. But I tell you what, uh, we kicked off the show with "Gamble on uh, uh, on Love." Now, tell me a little bit about this particular track because, believe me, I'm absolutely loving it. I'm an engineer myself. Uh, have been for almost forty years now. Not only doing studio recording, but I'm also front of house, toured around the world with a number of bands. And it's not often that I find a band or a singer or a song or an artist that I'm absolutely fascinated with. Gamble on Love does that to me. Tell me about it. Oh, well, thanks so much. You know, I, uh, I wrote that song in, uh, in Nashville, but uh, sometimes my buddies and I like to call it Nash Vegas. And, uh, and we said that, you know, we got in the songwriting room and, and, and said that and it, it kind of triggered this idea for Gamble on Love. It's, uh, um, you know, sometimes I, not just love, anything in life, I think. you gotta, you got to put yourself out there and take a risk, take a chance. I know I've done that in my life. I've done that in my music career. I'm sure I'll tell you in a bit about a certain billboard I put up at the beginning of my career in Nashville. Uh, and that was a bit of a gamble, I think. And uh, sometimes in love, you gotta, you got to put yourself out there and, and take a gamble as well. You know, uh, I am fascinated with this. I am going to ask you about that. I am going to ask you if she ever got back to you and did your album. Believe me, I've got the skinny. I know I've read all about it. I really have. So uh, a little later on down the track, we're going to ask you all about Taylor Swift. Uh, <laughs> we really are. And believe me, you're going to be fascinated with this one. You really are. Uh, but believe me, love, 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 gamble on love. Now, uh, I have a voice in my head. Let me let me fill you in here, Ryan. Uh, my producer, she gives me information, bits of, you know, stats and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> fan questions and stuff like that. And I do have a fan question for you right now. Uh, is, as a fan, how do we get hold of you, Ryan? Are you on Facebook? Are you on Twitter? Are you on Instagram? But more importantly, do you respond? I do respond, uh, and I'm on all of the above that you just said. Um, you know, I think in the modern day uh, music world here, I mean, you kind of almost got to be, you know, to, to, to uh, people are listening to our, our music all, all around the world, and uh, so it's, it's neat that we can do that. So I'm, I'm at Ryan Laird Official on um, Facebook and Instagram, and I think Twitter it's just at Ryan Laird, and, uh, and RyanLaird.com is my, is my website. So. Okay, and, and uh, you also on TikTok? You know, I'm not on that one yet. Maybe some people have put my songs on there. I don't know, to be honest, but there's just too many of these things. But <laughs> well, there is, actually. I can't be accused of being a talker myself. I've got to be honest with you, you know. <laughs> but yet again, you know, I don't respond anyway, to be honest. I just never get the time to, which is a shame. You know, I'd like to be able to talk to my fans, and believe me, we've got a lot of them. Uh, it's just that I never really do. So I, I usually say no. But having said that, Ryan, do you have a website? Can we buy music off your website? Do you have a merch store? I do, yeah. You can uh, uh, go to ryanlaird.com, R-Y-A-N-L-A-I-R-D.com, and uh, I've got music videos on my songs, on all the various platforms, uh, uh, including on Galaxy FM here, of course. And, uh, you know, um, yeah, any of that stuff. i got T-shirts up there. i got some funny ones. They say Get Laird on them. It's kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of hoping that you're going to send me one of these. I believe me, I would, I, I would love to be able to wear your brand. And believe me, people look, they find out who I'm wearing. Uh, today, Sonny Rosa, actually, from uh, uh, the studios over in, Can <laughs> over in uh, Canada as well. Yep, believe me, great guy. Does well. What a great studio. Yeah, he's, 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 he's
Go Sonny. Love you, mate. I really do. Uh, but, yeah, we, well, you know, kind of, what do you mean, <laughs> shameless advertising? Of course, that's what we're about. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, b believe me, Ryan, I'd be honoured to be able to wear your brand while I'm doing this. I'll send you. I'll send you a shirt. It'll. I think it'll look good on you. Uh, but but we got to make sure that uh, you know another Canadian friend of mine. We were talking. A mutual friend of ours. We were talking about earlier. Clayton Bellamy from the Road Hammers. Um, you know, he's. Uh, I think he owes you a, 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 a certain piece of attire from his uh, his one music video for the Mud Song, right? Yeah, absolutely. I've always wanted to get into his pants. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people have. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I don't care if they're 50 second hand. <laughs> I'm going to take them anyway, I really am. Just for the fact of taking them. Uh, but having said that, I mean, uh, great friend of ours. He really, really is. And in fact, I was telling him one day, uh, I was doing an interview with a lady coming out of Canada, and it was in her bedroom. You know what I mean? And I, I, I said, you know, I don't get asked to women's bedrooms that many times anymore. And, and he thought it was fascinating. He actually did an advert for me that we play here, you know, where he goes, Hi, this is Clayton Bellamy, and I don't know how I managed to get into your bedroom, but thank you for listening to Galaxy. It's like brilliant. Yeah, that's <laughs> hilarious. Now that we're virtual this way, you can, you can get into people's bedrooms all around the world, can't you? Yeah, I can, but, you know, again, I'm still not offered that many times, I've got to be honest. Uh, <laughs> Maybe my cartoon might make it <laughs> better than... Uh, we're going to turn you into a cartoon too, by the way. I better let you know this. Oh, okay, yeah. that, that sounds like fun. I look forward to seeing it. Yeah, believe me, it is a lot of fun. It really, really is. And at the same time, well, it's one thing that makes me look good. <laughs> hey, oh, is that in the caricature the cartoon? Yeah, yeah well, <laughs> to be honest with you, I've got a perfect face for radio. You know what I mean? I think you're looking good. You got you're rocking the you got like the rock star looking beard there. That would look really good in a cartoon too. Yep. Well, you know it does. It really, really does. Uh, <laughs> and in fact, it makes me look a couple of years younger too. Uh, <laughs> but having said that, I'm only 21. This is what radio does to you. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's one of these things. It really is. Now, Ryan, tell me about "Summertime Girl." This is a fascinating song. Yeah, this one was um, actually uh, my uh, an ex of mine for because this song I, this song came out I think it was uh, two thousand I'm, I'm taking a wild guess here I think it was around two thousand fifteen I released this one um, and that, of course this was over in in North America here you know Canada and all that um, nowadays it's kind of different because you know obviously our music's available online anywhere in the world really but. Uh, uh, I guess this is a New Zealand debut for it, but yeah, so that's, this song's a bit older, but it was it was written for the girl that I was with at the time, and uh, you know, I uh, summer was coming up, and uh, and I knew I wanted a, a great summer summer song I could have that I could really sing for her, and wrote the thing, and I thought it turned out really good, and decided, hey, why don't we share this one and see what people think of it? Well, I tell you what, uh, when we very first started playing your music, and believe me, we didn't say anything to anybody. Just played it, dip the toe in the water, if you know what I mean. See what the reaction is, because believe me, we have a lot of people get back to us. They want to know a lot of things about a lot of music. Uh, blew up our internet. Your music did, I've got to be honest. Uh, poor Sarah Reception. Uh, she started writing stuff down. Now she hands it to me on a USB. You know what I mean? <laughs> You're getting a huge reaction. Summertime Girl... Uh, is at the moment at 1,212 requests so far and climbing. So believe me, you're doing That's awesome. awesome. Well, you thank are... you, uh, all, all the Galaxy FM listeners out there. Thanks for, for uh, requesting Summertime Girl and, and my music. And, and to you, uh, DJ Grant, for spinning it. I really appreciate that. I, this is really making me really want to come and visit you guys sometime. We will talk like, about not just, that. Not just over the video camera. Believe me, Ryan, we're going to talk about that very shortly. But right now, here at Galaxy, the man himself, Ryan Laird, and Summertime Girl. Gosh, it's hot in here. <laughs> Damn so hot. It is. Good gosh. Uh, Ryan, um, have, are, are you a vegan? A vegan? I'm not a vegan, but I, I've, I've experimented being a vegetarian before. Okay, okay. well, yeah, I ask everybody this, but I'm just yeah. wondering, have you ever tried a vegan sausage? You know what, I have, because I've had, a, I've had, <coughs> I had someone make me a soy dog, I think it's called. Of course. <laughs> are they made of real vegans? Soy. Jeez, well, it's made of soy. Okay, no, 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 I was just wondering if the vegan sausages were made of real vegans. 
Oh, if they're made of real beef. I, I don't know. I've never heard that. <laughs> okay. I guess it would be, wouldn't it? It's in that if it's a vegan sausage, it must be made of real beef. <laughs> well, I was a little disappointed when I found out that girl guide biscuits weren't made of real girl guides. You know what weren't I mean? Weren't made of real girl. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Kind of upsetting that one, but I, I was, actually here's another good question because uh, I was asking one vegan that I met up with not so long ago, where do you guys hang out? Do you you never see us unless you're on the news creating shit? Where the hell do you guys socialise? Do you go to the pub? And he goes, yeah, we go to the pub. And I went, okay. What if you got upset with each other? Do we find you out in the car park getting the piss up? You know, is it still called having a beef? Having a beef? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that's a slang term that still gets used. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you get hit in the face, is that get a slap in the chops? Yeah. You, oh yeah, you get slapped in the chops, or you get you get uh, you get the knuckles across you, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. You know? It's better than taking one on the head of lettuce, really, isn't it? It is. It's <laughs> it's not as healthy for you. Lettuce yeah. is good for you. Exactly. I think we'll leave that one out. Actually, we yeah, will. <laughs> we will. Yeah, we will. Um, I've got a voice in my head. She's telling me. Um, all sorts of information. Uh, God right. save meat, not salad. God save meat, not salad? Yeah, okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> She's also my wife. Um, I, I tell women... Oh, wow. Women, oh, women love the fact that, that I've got a voice in my head and it's a female voice and that I'm married to it. They also love the fact that she actually gets paid to do it. <laughs> yeah, we got the female voice and you probably know all the right things to say to the female. Yeah, exactly, except I don't call me sorry. <laughs> <laughs> dear, oh dear, oh dear. How many countries today? Um, 104. Countries. 70, 74. 104 cities and 79 countries. Okay. Um, 104 cities around the world and 79 countries this morning tuned in. Really? Mm -hmm. We are global. That's awesome, guys. I, uh, yeah, this is phenomenal. And, uh, and you guys are all across New Zealand as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have that privilege as well. That's right, you're right here at Galaxy 107 FM. Got to say hi to Seamus Fitzgibbons this morning. Uh, Fit Simons, I'm sorry uh, for joining us. It's very nice to have you on board. Believe me, it really, really is. And uh, he's coming in from the UK. Really love that idea. Really, really do. Uh, now, Ryan, uh, we are kind of tentatively thinking about asking you if you would ever consider coming to New Zealand and playing in front of New Zealand audiences, we would absolutely love to have you here. Uh, pending, of course, how long it's going to take for the government to decide, let's open up the, door to, uh, the borders to international acts. You know what I mean? Would you consider doing that? Well, let me think about it for a sec. Yes, I would. I would love to come there. I, I, I've never been to New Zealand yet. Um, it's, it's on my bucket list to come. Yeah, everybody says that it's on their bucket list. It seems like the bucket has holes in it because we've never seen them. <laughs> Get them here. They never actually come? Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, my, my, mine's been uh, patched up. I, I'm, I'm <laughs> <laughs> ah, gosh. <laughs> dear Liza, dear Liza. Yeah, okay. Uh, somebody's singing a song in my headphones <laughs> for me. Now, Ryan, at the same time, do you know much about New Zealand? You know, I don't know, no, I, I can't say that I do know a lot about it. Obviously, I, uh, I I would like to come and learn more about it by visiting it, I think. Okay, yeah. well, uh, let, let me give you uh, an overall view. Yeah, I mean, I could spend days, decades, and, you know, all sorts of time talking about New Zealand, which is very boring, I've got to be honest with you. But we're basically made up of three islands, one right down the very bottom. It actually got a name which is really important, actually. It's called Stewart Island. Brilliant. Uh, whoever named New Zealand after that, well, imagination left, literally, and they called the next one South, 
Island, then there's North Island. So that's the three islands, if you know what I mean. Now, we're here, we're on the east coast of the North Island, which seems to be a little warmer than most places at the moment, uh, which is really nice. Uh, believe me, down the bottom of the South Island, they get snow and wind and sleet and hail. Uh, I went to university there, I know. You know what I mean? So believe me. How do you me. get between the islands? How do you get between the islands? Uh, oh. Well, you can fly or you can take the ferry. There is a ferry, you know, uh, Cook Strait Ferry goes between uh, north and south. Uh, I think there's a, uh, a charter service that goes, you know, from Invercargill to Stewart Island as well at some stage or, you know, something like that. Uh, Seamus is a uh, singer-songwriter. He is a friend of Dan Washburn's. Very cool. Very, you know, Dan's a good mate. He really, really is. Um, and he actually likes, would you believe, this young man. So, uh, you never know, I might be able to get in touch with Dan as well. Yeah, believe me, Dan's been listening to your music. Dan Washburn, he kind of yeah. likes your music as well. He really does. Uh, <clears throat> it becomes a, com a community. It's a family community. Believe me, it's ever expanding. And everybody loves to be able to get in touch with each other and before you know it, you never know, you might be collaborating, making songs, making stages, making money, you know, we're... Going on together. Yeah, oh, believe me, nothing worse than making money, is there? <laughs> it really isn't. Uh, now, you were saying that you got on a ferry yourself this morning, off a ferry this morning. You were doing a show yesterday, last night. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, I was playing over in uh, Vancouver, which is on the, the mainland of... Uh, our province of British Columbia here in Canada and you know where I am right now if you and where I live is on Vancouver Island so uh, we're just you know maybe an hour and a half ferry ride or so uh, from the mainland so I had a gig over there yesterday uh, you know I'm always traveling around with my guitar playing playing shows across Canada since we had the whole uh, pandemic I haven't really been able to, to leave Canada yet with my gigs so uh, historically I, I play all over you know I've been in Nashville for a decade playing there as well but uh, Hey, we got a lot of great music in Canada here, as you guys know, lots of places to play, so I'm enjoying it, but uh, uh, it almost sounds like New Zealand could be a home away from home for me, because I, I live, I'm an island guy here, and you guys are on, you guys have three islands there, so hey, it's going to be like what I'm used to. We are so much alike, you would never know, to be very honest, until you do come here, uh, because the people are great, much like the Canadians, we haven't found anybody in Canada we haven't loved yet, I've got to be honest with you. Um, we have so much scenery here in New Zealand. We're very, very proud of that. Don't know, are you familiar with Lord of the Rings? Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay, well, about an hour and a half away from where we are right now in this office is Hobbiton, the original set. Literally, wow. we can take, well, you know, the rest of the staff can take you there. Unfortunately, they won't let me back in. <laughs> you don't want me to ask, probably something happened there, I guess? Uh, well, let's just say uh, I didn't fall out with the Hobbits. <laughs> but the security staff don't like me too much anymore because I, uh, well, one of their security cards went missing and I'm not allowed to go back until it comes back somehow. I was going to ask if you took, if you, if you took the ring, like if it was your precious. No, no, uh, I tell you what, I do have a nice one though, I've got to be honest here, have a look at this. That's a very nice one, wow, that's, that's a big one. Uh, pure, that's pure gold too, by the way, it, it really is the real deal. Um, <laughs> strange thing about it is uh, uh, Brian, Brian Wayne Perry is joining us. Nice to have you on board, Brian. Uh, Barbara got out of the car one day, she went shopping, looked down, and here's this lying on the ground next to a knife. <laughs> yes. So I says to did you recover the knife? She goes, no, I didn't pick up the knife. I left it there. I went, but yeah, and she goes, yeah, now her son uh, is a car racer, he, he does that, uh, but he's also... Uh, very accomplished as a jeweler and she was going to hand it to him to melt down now I says now hold on written on here is actually MC and I'm a master of ceremonies I've actually yeah uh, that's what it stands for I thought it was maybe MC Hammer but it's, it's master of ceremonies master of ceremonies and I've been doing it for many many years you know what I mean so uh, I says yeah. no way are you going to give that to your son to melt down this is coming <laughs> this way so uh, she donated it to my cause that's awesome. Well, hey, it's a, it's a standout ring, that's for sure. Yeah, I, I, believe me, <laughs> it's heavy as hell. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it weighs quite a bit. Yeah. It does. And uh, Brian, howdy, pal. Nice to have you on board, my friend. It really, really is. Now, 
the thing is, here at Galaxy, we go through so many bands and we have so many friends connected to the, uh, to the station in many, many ways around the world. Mostly, it's about damn good music. It really is. Nice to have our fans. We've got a uh, huge amount of fans and I appreciate each and every one of you, even though I really wouldn't want to buy you all a beer because I couldn't afford it. Uh, <laughs> but sometimes... You've just got to make it work. Now, Ryan, tell me about that. You're very good at what you do, Grant. I like that. It was very slick. I like that. <laughs> uh, well, you know, uh, make it work. This is a song uh, that um, I like writing music about lots of things in life. And uh, this song for me was written about unifying us as people and as human beings all together, no matter where you are in the world, whether you're in Canada, where I am, or in New Zealand, where you guys are, or in Nashville, or anywhere, uh, sometimes I think we all got to come together and, and, and kind of be, be brothers and sisters. And, uh, you know, I even mentioned some of that stuff in the song, uh, and it's just, um, you know, it's, it's about our planet and about us as people coming together and just finding a way that we can make this whole thing work. Well, I'll tell you what, 1,391 requests and still climbing, my friend is Make It Work. Here's Ryan Laird, live at Galaxy. How you feeling, Ryan? I'm doing great. How you doing? Nice. Yeah, I'm doing real well. How's that uh, vodka going for you? It's going all right. I'm getting a, I'm getting a little uh, dizzy here, but that's all right. Oh, that's, what, that's good. Uh, believe me, I'll, I'll look better the more you drink. If you see me start swaying left to right like this, you'll know what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do, we'll, we'll do. Um, and guys, after we do the radio interview, those of you that are joining us on Facebook right now, we're actually going to do a little something special for you guys. We're going to get Ryan to sing a song. How's that? You know, we're going to keep it in there. Uh, Ryan, you'll get a copy of everything we do today. And uh, after we do the interview, we usually do a few crazy vo uh, photos of each other. Um, we, we, we take photos of ourselves and then we take photos with you as well so uh, we do that um, Barbara puts it all together we give you the uh, the raw everything then Barbara will make a movie and mm -hmm. put it there uh, she also puts it on YouTube and everything like that and I thank everybody who watch us on YouTube and then she's going to convert us all into a cartoon as well so uh, we, oh, that's cool. Wow. You guys do the whole, the whole full smorgasbord there. That's well, great. you know, it, it's all about the promotions. And um, if we can supply you something that you might like, you might show your friends. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'll, I can share it on my uh, all the places you mentioned earlier. Exactly. Yep, absolutely. All of those. And, and uh, well, we're very, very proud of the work that we do here. We love to be able to get behind and promote people, if you know what I mean. So... Uh, that's great. That's wonderful. And I love that you're all about the music, too. I think you said that earlier. That's really we good. only play the best music. And, and that's God's honest. Uh, we have a board of between any given board meeting between 8 and 12 people. Their major concern is our reputation, our image. You know what I mean? So we have a certain standard. They won't go below it. And uh, then, would you believe, Barbara hands it to me on a USB kind of thing that I play in my car... Uh, mm -hmm. for two reasons. First reason is uh, nobody can influence me on whether or not I want to do the interview. The other mm -hmm. thing is nobody wants to drive with me. <laughs> Are you wild behind the wheel? Oh, well, we're in the country, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, gravel roads and country uh, fire breaks and stuff. Lots of fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. Kicking up dirt, kicking up mud. It always starts with one. That's right, you're right here at Galaxy 107 FM, and believe me, absolutely elated to be joined by Ryan Leo today. Now, Ryan. What got you into music in the first place? What was the moment you decided, I want to get in here? I think it was the, uh, ever since I, I, as far back as I can remember anyway, as a young child, just having the idea in my mind 
uh, that I love music and it would be so fun to get to do this for a living someday when I when I'm growing up, you know. And uh, so my parents put me in piano lessons when I was five. I was in classical piano. I got some classical music training. And uh, two years after that, I was about seven. And uh, at Christmas, I got my first guitar uh, under the Christmas tree. And, um, you know, I could just never put it down. I, I, I play every day. And uh, by the time I was uh, in my early teens, you know, around 13 years old range, um, I had a band with my siblings. I, I have a, a brother and a sister. We're all within three years of each other. And uh, I was writing songs, and I was playing guitar, and my brother played the drums, and my sister was on the keyboards. And we couldn't drive yet. We didn't have driver's licenses. So, uh, you know, my parents would take us around. We had an old uh, kind of beat-up motorhome back in those days, and they'd take us around on weekends, and we'd play these gigs at, you know, barbecues and festivals around Canada, where I'm from. And uh, that's how I got my start. You know, I, I absolutely love that. And uh, for Tracy, coming out of Nebraska, she was asking, uh, what would you say would be the pinnacle moment of your success? The pinnacle moment. Thanks for the question, Tracy. Um, you know, I've been fortunate to, I've been doing this a long time, and I've, had for, I've been fortunate to have a few. If i got to pick one, um, that's, a really tough, that's a really tough one to say. I guess I'm going to go with um, having the courage to, to go to Nashville and, uh, and do something a little different when I first got there that it was either going to give me a bad reputation or it was probably going to open up some doors for me, and I didn't know what was going to happen when I did it. I know you want to ask me about it. I don't know if you want me to give it away yet, but that, that, that thing I did on a billboard there is probably one of the big moments. Well, I think that would be a good time to talk about this, actually, because, believe me, I think I'm your man. Uh, but having said that, let's talk about advertising on a billboard. Of all things, this is how did you afford to do this in the first place? Uh, but look at the generation of uh, interest that you created with it. Tell me all about this. Where did you come up with this idea? It was, you know, I got to Nashville. I was 19 years old. I, I, mean, I mean, I'm from a farm in small town Canada. I didn't know anybody in Nashville, but I knew I needed to get there to just, you know, give myself a chance in the music industry because that was the big place in North America here to go. So, especially, you know, for country music especially. So, um, you know, I, I drove down there. And, um, and, I, and I spent some time writing some songs, uh, meeting people, but it's tough. It, there's people from all over the world that go there, um, you know, and, and it takes a lot of time. They call it a 10-year town, I think, sometimes, because, you know, you got to put your 10 years in. And I, I definitely did, but, but even before I hit 10 years, I tried to come up with some ways to get some attention to myself from recording companies and people in the music business, because I just wanted a chance to get some... Uh, some exposure to my music because obviously you need that as a, as a young budding, budding artist if you want to actually turn it into a job and everything so um you know i i just thought about it for a while i was like what can i do that's different what could i how could i be unique you know uh obviously i i believe in my voice and my music but sometimes you got to have a little more than that just to stand out in the beginning and so and then it just came to me one day and i thought you know what i'm gonna do i'm just i'm just gonna rent out a big billboard because I haven't seen an artist do that before, and and, there's, and there happened to be a big a big billboard available uh, on Music Row in Nashville, which is where most of the recording companies are. And Taylor Swift's recording company was across the road, Big Machine uh, Label Group. And and I thought maybe they'll see it, and, and maybe she'll see it, of course, too. But maybe the record label will see it too, and who knows what'll happen? I didn't know what'll happen. So how am I going to do this thing? So I, I hit up an uncle of mine. I'd saved up a few bucks. I mean, I was a 19-year-old kid. I didn't have a lot of money, but uh, you know, I, I, I just, we talked to the billboard company. They really liked the idea, and and, um, and no pun intended, but we, we, we figured out a way to make it work. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, and we put the billboard up, and it was up for, for a month, and, and two weeks into the thing, I got uh, contacted on my, uh, I think it was on my, my social media, maybe on my Facebook page. A, a fan wrote me a, a note, and he said, Ryan, you're never going to believe it. Watch this video link. And I clicked on it and uh, it was Taylor Swift, you know, and she was on a big mainstream news interview, national TV, and she said she saw this billboard by this Canadian guy, and she listened to my music and thought it was great, and uh, it'd be awesome to maybe work together. And then when she said that, everything changed for me. I, I, got, I got contacted, and, you know, things started to happen. Boom, there you go. Believe me, that's a fantastic story. In fact... I think there's a song in there somewhere as well, if you know what I mean. There really, really is. Uh, but there is. did you actually ever do a release with her? We didn't do a release together. What ended up happening was, uh, you know, 
her record label found out about me and, and the music that way. And I got how it kind of works. I found in Nashville, in the music industry is once one of these recording when you're a new artist, um, you know, once one of these recording companies finds out about you, you'll you'll go from nobody taking your call or something to now everybody wants to to meet with you. You know, yeah. And it can happen overnight like that. And that's what kind of happened to me. And so I met with a bunch of these these folks and everything. And it all takes time. But um, eventually, I did get a, get a, a deal, and um, I had this song called "I'm Your Man" that came out uh, uh, that I know you're spinning coming up. And uh, what can I say? I was very fortunate. I was, I was um, the song ended up becoming a, a top ten hit song, uh, you know, over in these parts where I'm from. And it, and I was off to the races. And I'd never had anything like that. I'd never even had a song on a, you know, on the radio or anything at that point. Well, I tell you what, Ryan, here at uh, Galaxy Now, I'm finding it hard getting through a breakfast show. I've got to be honest with you, without playing one or two of your songs, I'm Your Man right now, way up over 1,900 requests and climbing like crazy. And believe me, it's an absolute pleasure to play it. So, here at Galaxy is Ryan Laird, and I'm Your Man. Right, <laughs> way up over 1900. Right? That's awesome. Nice That's great to hear. You know what? You know how I wrote this. I wrote this song with somebody else too. Okay. Okay. Someone that someone you know. I wrote it with Jason McCoy from the Roadhammers. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Very, very cool. Yeah. Uh, well, my producer says to me that it's 1978 requests at this time. That's amazing. That's awesome. Um, look, bigger than that is bigger than that. <laughs> yeah. You Oh, that's your second. That's your second magical. You had to make it work, pun, and now you got the bigger than that one. That, that's, that's really good. I like that. <laughs> it is. Like, that's the truth. I'm not lying. Um, believe me, you're way up over the four uh, four thousand requests. And my goodness, that one. that's amazing. You really well, thanks, are. Thanks for sharing that. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, look, um, I, I will let you know how many people were online listening to this interview afterwards. No point in giving it to you now because it's still clicking over, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, but sure. you will be amazed, literally. And, and as I said, you know, 70 odd countries, hundreds and hundreds of cities around the world are tuned in to us. We are a global station. We love to play good music. And I've established we have rules. We've got people who guide us and say, listen, this is either on yep. or it's not on. Um, so we have a, um, a certain sort of pride that we are able to do this. And we're not interested in doing these interviews and putting in adverts and making money and stuff like this. This is about the artist. It's about the music. It's about the songwriting and anything else that the artist wants to talk about. You know what I mean? That's really good, guys, that you do that. I mean... Uh... Honestly, the uh, I've been doing music for so long now, over a couple decades. I've done hundred, probably thousands of interviews at this point. But it's like uh, not everybody's that way, you know. And that's that's awesome that you guys are doing that. And I think uh, it's really good for for music long term. You know, it's good for music. At, at the end of the day, my friend, um, we like to, and we take pride in the saying that we play tomorrow's music today. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Only because we are tomorrow. You're still Wednesday, aren't you? We are, yeah. Yeah, you see? Uh, the, <laughs> there's the correlation right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Anyway. It's actually that way. It is that way. It is. Anyway, let's go back to the desk. <laughs> I love this, I really, really do. Check this out, uh, Ryan Laird <clears throat> is most commonly described as the Keith Urban of Canadian country music. Uh, well, he looks like him too, to be honest. We, yeah, he does. <laughs> oh, look, he's blushing now. I can feel the heat from here. Uh, he's worked in uh, many, many festivals and stuff like that. You know, the Dolphin Country Fest, Craven Country, Jamboree, CMT Music Festival, Calgary Stampede. It just goes on and on and on. Um, Actually, I've got an issue with the Calgary Stampede because I keep every year emailing these guys saying, i got an idea. Why don't we have a running of the Santas? 
I reckon a running, a running of the Santas. Yeah, instead of having a, you know, you know what I mean. Uh, you, you could throw gumboots at them. Man, you're the man of all the ideas. Uh, I, I, I think this is a great idea. I think it would be a spectacle for sure, you know, <laughs> every now and then. You'll be able to throw candy canes at them and all sorts of yeah, things. It'd be fun. You'll look nice yeah. in the Santa's And, and believe me, the, the promoters, they'll make money. They will. Uh, yeah. At the same time, we could use it as a weight loss program. You could be head Santa. <laughs> I could be who? Head Santa. You could be head Santa. I could be head Santa? Yeah. Uh, I'm not into candy canes. Are you not? <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, Rudolph doesn't attract me at all. <laughs> I got a sweet tooth. I got a sweet tooth. Oh, well, there you go. There you go. Uh, you need to put on a bit of weight, though. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, probably. I, no. Well, yeah. I'll, uh, I just got to hit the road again once the world's open enough here again, and then I can I get all that uh, backstage, uh, you know, oily, greasy food or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, now, tell me. <laughs> Uh, it has been a kind of surreal time, especially in an artist's life right now, you know, just getting back to normal ha has been quite the mission over the last year and a bit, if you know what I mean. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, I, I just can't get excited of going to the lounge to watch a concert. I need to go and see live stuff. I need to feel that. I need to have somebody next to me and people around me and, you know, the whole enchilada, including the joy of having somebody playing music live to me. Um, have you missed that yourself? Absolutely, I have. You know, I, I got out, uh, as I said earlier, to play a gig this weekend, and I went out and watched a little live music as well. And uh, it, was, it was so refreshing to get to do that again. Um, for me, uh, music's one of the most important things in my life. And uh, I love, you, you know, you're an audio engineer, I am as well. You know, I love recording, I love writing and recording these songs, some of them you're playing here today. But uh, for me, there's something really magical when you get to be on a stage in front of other people and you interact with them and you kind of have a connection and you share a moment together. And to me, that's really special and it's something that I, I want to have in my life the rest of my life. So when we weren't able to perform live for a while there, you know, it was kind of, kind of tough. So uh, I'm really looking forward to, to touring again and, and getting out there. Playing live for me is, is where it's at. Absolutely, I'm right there with you. In fact, uh, the guy that I'm wearing, the t-shirt today, Sonny Rosa, uh, his studios and uh, our radio station, we got together, we collaborated and uh, we did a couple of albums uh, to raise money for uh, artists that weren't making any at the time, you know what I mean, and uh, mm -hmm. did okay actually, we did alright, uh, and I think he's uh, considering it maybe a third and a fourth coming up in the near future anyway, so, uh, which is really, really cool, but uh, yeah. believe me, we here in New Zealand, you see Barbara is a manager of, a, um, uh, of Aurora Entertainment, which is an entertainment company that takes bands up and down the country, uh, brings bands into the country, and we also uh, zip over the ditch over to Australia, that, yeah, West Island, we will call it. <laughs> uh, look, we, we have a brotherly kind of love relationship, if you know what I mean. You know, yeah. it's kind of a sporting kind of deal. <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. Cousins but, across the cousins across the water there. Yeah, well, it's much like Canadians and Americans and ice hockey. You know what I mean? Right. I know what you mean. Yeah. Ours is yeah. Rug, ours is rugby union. <laughs> that, little little bit of competition going on. Yeah. Well, you know, it's uh, rugby union. It's um, uh, gridiron without pads, no helmet. You know, we, we yeah. do it hardcore, literally hardcore. Uh, we have the former world champions, and uh, I think South Africa is the world champions right now, is that right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, but Australia, well, 30 years and they haven't beaten the All, uh, the all Blacks, really, if you want to put it down like that. Not our fault. <laughs> nothing in the cabinet. What a shame. Uh, but we love Australia, where they are. <laughs> we love them. You guys them. are number one, though. You guys are number one. But at the same time, if we're going to bring you here, we would love to take you over there, do a number of shows, make it worthwhile for you to come down to Australasia. Let's do an Australasian tour. What do you reckon? Oh, I'd love to do that. You know, I um, and I appreciate. I really do. I mean it. Like I appreciate all your guys' support with my music in this over this past year. And uh, you know, I released a song called um, uh, 
if I ever lost you uh, all across Australia this last year as well, and it's really uh, taken off there too. So I, I definitely need to do the full Australasia tour, I think, when I come. There you go. Well, you know, we actually have this. Unfortunately, we don't have the time to play that one today, uh, but it is one of the only ones that we have of you that we have uh, overlooked, and uh, we're rather remiss of that, but we're kind of due to amount of time that we've got to be able oh, to spend okay. on it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. you know, uh, I don't think there's much bigger than that, really. I don't. Uh, in fact, I don't think there's a hell of a lot bigger than that. In fact, over 5,000 requests so far, four bigger than that. Ryan, tell me, what's the secret to your success with Bigger Than That? Well, Bigger Than That's a very special song for me and, and for other people too, I, if I may say so, I think, just because um, it, it's it's been uh, shared with a lot of youth all across North America, where I'm from, especially in my home country of Canada here, in schools particularly. Um, a lot of schools have, uh, have have used that song in their classrooms, and um, I, I'm part of a tour that um, I was part of starting about six years ago called Bigger Than That. So this song actually is the only song I think I've ever written that has a whole tour around it. <laughs> um, and, and it's basically, in a nutshell, I mean, we, we go, uh, and I'll tell you the website, it's biggerthanthat.org, and uh, people can check that out, but it, we go into schools uh, and, we, and we do motivational youth empowerment musical concerts uh, for, for people, especially young people, like um, young adults and kids. And uh, I talked to them about some of the trials and tribulations I had when I was a young guy first getting in the music industry and, and how I got told no a lot and how I had to find a way to stay strong and believe in myself. Um, I mean, I can tell you, there was when I was even putting up the billboard in Nashville at Taylor Swift that we talked about earlier, you know, there was people there that said, I don't know if I'd be doing that, Ryan, that's a bad idea, you know, you might get laughed at and that kind of stuff. But, and kids get a lot of that peer pressure, I think, these days, uh, no matter where you are in the world. And I wanted to have a, a song in it that could back up a whole tour that I could do, that, that I could go and, and use, use my musical voice, because that's my passion is the music. But I also like helping people and sharing a good message with music. You know, sometimes songs are just about having a good time, but I think sometimes we've got we to gotta reach deeper and write and, and, and share a song that, that can change someone's life. And that's what I hope bigger than that is that, you know, anyone really doesn't have to be a, a child or a kid, but anyone can uh, can hear it and, and maybe feel that they can can go after something they want in their life. And if there's negativity around, just, you know, throw that away and be bigger than that. Well, I've got to be honest with you, Ryan. You have connected with our audio audience, and we don't call them fans. We call them the audio audience because, believe me, they listen and they scrutinize. They connect. They get in touch with us. They tell us how they feel about your music. 5,000 requests so far. And believe me, it is just going out of control here at Galaxy. In fact, it's getting bigger than that here at Galaxy. How are you feeling, brother? Man? Yeah, that was awesome. That's great. Awesome. I love awesome. that. Nice. You're, you're, you're bigger than that yourself. <laughs> I've been accused of things on radio before. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you remember Darth Vader from Star Wars? Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember his lightsaber? I do. Okay, that's like this thing here that Barbara has. You, you just got to move quickly because she's very swift with what she does. You know what I mean? Uh, your Darth Vader there? Oh, it's a hard hat area, too, bro, I tell you. <laughs> we've, we've got staff all around taking photos and doing bits and pieces. You will get copies of backstage bits that nobody else gets. Believe me, you will. Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. I've, I've got a little machine. When I play the bigger than that shows, actually, I bring it with me because the kids get a kick out of it. It's just a foot-controlled uh, musical looper, like a loop station. You know, mm -hmm. you probably know what those are. And, and I, and I, but I call it R2-D4, who's the cousin of R2-D2 from right. Star Wars. <laughs> and when I click on R2-D4 with my foot, then he plays a little background drums and stuff with me when I'm playing my gig, right? And the kid's like that. Yeah, nice. Nice, believe me. Um, <clears throat> we'll wrap it up here, but we will do this live guitar thing for the people on Facebook. Oh, sure. Um, okay. and, and then after that, we'll take a couple of photos and do a couple of little bits that sounds and sounds like fun. Hey, is there any song that you want for the Facebook thing? Uh, if you want me to do one, I don't have to, but if you do want me, is there is there one in particular you want me, you want me to do the new single or something? Or? Yeah, that would be great. Okay. That would be great, actually. It really would. Right. Um, but uh, what I'll do is I will sign off to the radio people. I'll yeah. just switch over to the other okay. studio again. Um, thank you to the staff as well.
Absolute pleasure, like always. What? Absolute pleasure, yeah. like always. And this time you didn't throw anything at me. No. <laughs> <laughs> so That's yeah, unusual. That's unusual. <clears throat> Even the guard dog, you've lit the guard dog in. Alright. Wow. That's it's unusual. Assumed position. It has. Gosh, we, we have a couple of guard dogs here at night because uh, we, when nobody's in the studios at night, um, we have a few people that, you know, might look at the radio station and decide there might be right. some free stuff in there. Mm -hmm. So we have a couple of guard dogs. Um, I was feeding right. them their bones the other day and we're in a courtyard, right? Business <laughs> <laughs> courtyard. Feeding them their bones the other day and these two young boys come walking past and they're looking at the size of these bones, right? And these dogs are ripping these things to pieces. And I looked at them and went, well, so much for the postman. Hopefully, hopefully we'll get another one tomorrow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they freaked, mate. They're big. I got a great Pyrenees on my deck, so he's, that's a big dog. Nice. Let's go back to the desk, bro. Right? That's right, you're right, you're a galaxy. <clears throat> Excuse me. 107 FM, it is 5 after 12 o'clock. A little bit over time, but we're fine about that. 24 degrees downtown right now. It's hot, really is. Bit of feedback as well, sorry about that. Anyway, it is Thursday, July 29th, and today we've been talking to Ryan Laird, and it's been an absolute pleasure. Now, Ryan, are you writing more music at the moment? Are you recording new music? Will you come back again? Absolutely, I'll come back again. And yes, I am working on new music. I'm, I'm consistently working on new music. I uh, uh, the evolution of technology in in music making has advanced so much since when I first got into to making music years ago. That now I can in my own home, you know, the comfort of my own home. I've got a little recording studio, and if I get a guitar and I get an idea, I can go and, and pretty much write it and record it in the comfort of my own home. So. You know, long story short, I'm, I'm working on a whole record of new music and uh, really excited to share it with you coming up. You know, I absolutely understand that. Being an engineer myself, and I've worked in some of the uh, more prestigious uh, recording studios, not only here in New Zealand, but Australia as well, and uh, other places, even in England, I've done a bit of work there. Uh, believe me, there has been some fascinating times, but the trend today literally is home engineering, a and it's... You know, it's as good as, if not better these days, than what we could do in a professional studio. It's absolutely fantastic. I know, it's pretty wild. Now, some of my songs that you played today, I'm thinking, you know, I'm your man, some of these other ones. You know, they were recorded in Nashville in a, in a professional, large recording studio with a live drummer and real band members, and then, you know, me playing like a band, me, I'm playing guitar with them. Some of the newer songs I've released, uh, Make It Work, you play today as an example. I recorded all the instruments. I played. I played every instrument on that song. I did it in my in my own home on a, on a computer based uh, format of recording, and and that's different. Yeah, I, I couldn't have done that maybe you know ten years ago. It wouldn't have been. You wouldn't have been able to. Totally understand that. In fact, uh, a young lady that uh, has been consistently on the charts here at Galaxy. Her name is Ashley Pater. She does exactly the same thing. Everything from the drums up, she will uh, do herself. Mix it, master it, the whole enchilada, and you know what? I couldn't fault it. And believe me, I've got a lot of years of listening to music and trying to pick out because I don't listen to music as a fan would. I listen to it as an engineer. I break it down. I try and work out all the folds and all the blemishes, everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. Believe me, with your music and like hers, couldn't pick anything wrong with it at all. In fact, I was very, very impressed, my friend. I really, really was. Okay. Um, Thanks a lot. It so, just comes from years of practice. Well, you know, it, it's a, an absolute pleasure to be able to bring talented people and talented music like yourself, talented songwriters, to the world. It really, really is. And, and uh, without people like you, and I hope you are going to be able to release new music with us, come back again, because believe me, I need to keep my job. <laughs> 
we got to have we got to have you behind the mic you're natural yeah well thank yeah. you thank you um and i'm going to make sure the boss is here that actually i am <laughs> in fact i'm going to dub that one in there and every time you say i'm a natural there you go <laughs> let me let me say you're you're the best interviewer i've ever been with in new zealand there you go <laughs> absolutely fantastic and i'm gonna wear that one i am <laughs> yeah, believe me somebody called me uh, the other day uh the godfather of modern internet radio and i went godfather uh, well, well we could go grandfather but we're not we're not that bad <laughs> I said to him, is that a way of saying I'm just old? And they went, well, kind of. I went, thanks. Great. Well, you're 20, right? Yeah, you know, coming from an 18 year old, I suppose that is old, isn't it? Yeah. It's all perspective, isn't it? <laughs> it is, it really is. Uh, believe me. Anyway, guys, uh, we're, we're going to, uh, yes, we're going to switch over. Uh, but in the meantime, Ryan, thank you so much for joining us here at Galaxy. It has been an absolute pleasure. And I am, am, am very much looking forward to having you back again, releasing new music and everything like that. I really, really am. So thank you so much. Now, for those of you that are watching on YouTube and, well, for those of you that are watching on Facebook right now, don't go away. We've got something special for you. But in the meantime, let's go back over to the studio for radio. Here's Christopher Cross way back in 1979. All right. <coughs> How was that, my brain? That was awesome. This has been a lot of fun today. Nice, nice. Um, you're not religious, are you? Not really. Okay, uh, that's cool because I, just the other day I was talking to one of the pastors down the road here, one of the churches, and I says, you know, there's a lot of references in the Bible about the internet. Uh, and this pastor says to me, how do you work that one out, Grant? And I says, well, okay, let's go back to Adam and Eve, way back there. He goes, yeah, and I says, there was an apple involved. And he goes, you're right. And I says, don't forget, way back then, it was a long time ago, it could only take one bite. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, that's very witty. I says, well, hold on, let's, let's come forward a little bit in history then. Uh, Moses was one of the first internet users. He goes, how do you figure Moses? I says, well, don't forget, back then, again, reception wasn't that great, so he had to get up high, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he goes. I says, so what did he download from? He goes, what? And I says, the cloud. He goes, right. Yeah, I says, so uh, what did he download onto? He goes, what? And I says, his tablet. <laughs> <laughs> he not, goes, not the digital kind of way of today, though. Well, no, but it still it works, doesn't it? He says, great. You know, it's easier to ask for forgiveness than permission. I says, yeah, it is. So I stole his bike. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take it back to him and ask him, I'm sorry, will you forgive me? Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. I refrained from saying to him, though, about uh, Jesus uh, on the Last Supper with his mates, you know, getting on the piss, you know, breaking bread and all that sort of stuff. End of the night, he says to his mates, come on, guys, drink up and be merry, for tomorrow, Judas is taking me to see Nine Inch Nails. <laughs> You're naughty. I'm naughty, yeah, yeah, I am. I am. Ryan, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm going to throw the floor over to you to have a play. Hey, sure. Um, well, I think uh, we chatted earlier. I said I'd do a little version of my, my latest single, If I Ever Lost You. So this is this is one of the ones that I, I did in the home studio, you know, recorded it. And, uh, uh, and uh, you know it was written during the uh, the lockdowns and stuff as well. And uh, I think I thought it had a bit of an ironic title to it because it's you know if I ever lost you, I don't know about you, but my mind initially before you hear the song, I, I immediately go to somewhere where it's like, oh maybe the song's kind of a downer one or something about losing somebody or you know that kind of thing. But it's really not. It's kind of like if I ever lost you, I don't want that to ever happen because this is how great it is, you know. So if anybody's got someone like that, then maybe you can tell them how yeah how much they mean to you. So. <clears throat> All right, I haven't played this acoustically in a while. Let's see, I guess, can you see my guitar here? Yep. I'm going to uh, get her up here. All right. <clears throat> Stare at you now, but I 
war zone. Your war soft hands, you saw to my skin. You are the one and only one. Galaxy Artist page? Yeah, is that on? Well, I looked through your website. Is that is that what you mean? It's on there? Um, no, I'll, no, I'll, I'll, I'll give Barbara to send you the link to it. Um, okay. Believe me, it's all about artists and everything like that. If you got anything on, if you got a show on, if you uh, even if you got the opening of a bottle, put it on there. It's free of charge. People look at this play, uh, this page. They they go through it. There's all sorts of walks of life. Everything from agents to promoters to festival people you name it everybody's in there having a look please use it it's all about promotions you know what i mean oh that's awesome that's that's great you guys are doing that i look forward to checking it out i've got one more thing i'm going to ask you next time you're doing something with a recordable 58 you know a nice microphone yeah how about saying hi this is Ryan on Galaxy or something like that, and we would love to be able to play it. Do a funny one like uh, yeah, we'll do a funny it. one like Clayton Bellamy does, or <laughs> you know anything. Sure. Um, yeah. We usually leave it up to the artist to make up what they're going to say, it's rather than us give you a line because they all sound the same. Then you know what I mean? Yeah. No. No. I'll give you something good. I I can uh, next time I'm back in my studio there, I'll uh, I'll record you a couple liners and I can send them over to to uh, Barbara there. Nice, mm -hmm. nice. Make them an MP3 form. Unfortunately, an MP3 format. Okay, just something like five to ten seconds or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, oh, hi, this is Ryan Lead on Galaxy 107 FM. Something Please. like that, or um, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm also in your bedroom, and I don't know how I got there, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I won't steal Clayton's one, but I'll, I'll come up with something good. Nice, nice. <laughs> Love that because yeah. it's all about keeping your name rolling here. Which means people go and find out on the interwebby thing who you are, what you are. They get to know your music before you know it. You're making sales. You're selling koozies and t-shirts and picks, and you know. And, and more importantly, you're making more money on, on your music. You know what I mean? Absolutely. No, that's great. I, you know, the one nice thing about uh, Spotify for artists uh, like myself is you can log in and you can see where people. Like what country and what city they're listening to your song. So I've had my latest one there, uh, Fiber Lost You, like uh, 
I noticed New Zealand on there. Like there's a bunch of it's up high on, on my higher on my country list of people listening. So obviously they're hearing it on, on Galaxy. Yeah. I think probably. Well, believe me, we would like to take that credit. We really, really would. Yes, we play you. We play the hell out of you. We get a lot of requests for you, as you can tell that I've been telling you a lot of the stats and everything. So cool. Believe me, that's so cool. We we do that. That's so. I'd be honoured to take that credit, actually. Um, for you guys that are watching on Facebook right now, I've got to thank you for joining us right now because, believe me, it's been an absolute pleasure catching up and getting to know Ryan Laird and his music. He is coming back. We'll keep you informed. But in the meantime, if you're going to watch over there on YouTube, sub, thumb, bell. Bingo. Have a great day. Um, stay there, my friend, because we're going to do a couple of crazy things next. Um, All right. Aunt Barbara is out. <laughs>